Is there a chance that we're ruining our MacBook batteries by not using the MagSafe adapter? Brian Loving, uh, love, Lovin, Lovin <laughs> says, I'm getting about three and a half hours of battery life on an M1 MacBook Pro. I'm assuming it's VS Code open, Slack, web browsing. That seems a little low, considering my own experience has been, I'm getting probably a full day's worth of work. Am I not working as hard as Brian? Probably. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. Oh, yeah, he does a lot of stuff. But I do have a lot of things open as well, including those famous Electron apps that like to suck up your juice. I've got Todoist, I've got Notion, I've got the Notes app. Usually have a couple of instances of VS Code open. Whenever I develop mobile apps, I do use the simulators, but I tend to turn those off as soon as I'm done testing, because I know those really, really suck up the batteries. And then finally, there's Chrome. That's the worst offender for me because, well, I usually have 30 or 40 tabs open and sometimes multiple windows. And looking at the energy usage on my machine, Google Chrome is up there. Now I did decide to test this out for myself and actually keep an eye on the battery instead of just going on a whim and saying it lasts me all day. And I was actually kind of surprised. It doesn't last all day. I'll show you my chart in a second, but here are some of the responses. Now, Brian discovered that VS Code was the culprit for him. If we take a look at his activity monitor, first of all, I don't recognize his VS Code icon. So whatever he's using, maybe he's using a special version of VS Code. This is what mine looks like. Uh, this is what his looks like. I don't know what he's using. Mine has always looked like this. So he's blaming VS Code for that. And some other people replied saying that there are some plugins or extensions for VS Code that might be causing the memory leak. And I think one person identified that the settings sync, which is part of VS Code, it actually synchronizes your VS Code settings. That makes sense, right? To call it setting syncs. Anyway, uh, <laughs> setting sync is the one that's causing most of the drain. I use setting sync. I love it because it synchronizes. Oh, I already told you what it does. So if you're having issues with quick battery drain and you see that VS Code is listed at the top of those charts there in uh, energy usage and activity monitor, then perhaps try turning off some of your extensions to see if that helps out. Now, I did report on this channel that in my previous MacBook, the M1 Max, I was having a different issue. Not lasting long enough was a non-issue for me. It always lasted long enough for me. And so does this machine, the M2 Max. The issue that I saw was the total capacity that dropped from 100% to 87% in a mere eight months of use. One of the commenters reached out to me and gave me some potential ideas of why that might be happening. I'll get into that in a moment. But first, let's take a look at my charts. This is what I recorded yesterday evening after I had my day of work with a machine and it was getting already pretty low. You can see that it was last charged to 100%. The battery health is actually normal and maximum capacity is 100%. Great. I always keep my energy mode on high when on battery and when on power adapter because I want to use the maximum power available to me. So that's just my use case. Of course, if you set it to low or auto, that's probably going to last you much longer than it did for me. And that's probably the number that Apple is reporting, um, the 22 or 23 hour of runtime on a single charge. I'm always on high power mode because I don't care. I never need 20 hours straight of using the computer without being plugged in. Now, if I check my cycle count, it's at 14 and maximum capacity is being reported at 100 here as well. Something that you should actually pay attention to when you're buying a used machine. Now, I did check out the energy tab yesterday. This is what it looked like at the time at the end of my day when the battery was running low and VS Code, it was up there. It has a few sub processes, but it wasn't uh, huge like we saw on Brian's tweet. Google Chrome was the biggest issue for me. Even my Electron apps, when they're backgrounded, they're not taking up that much energy. You can see here that I started using the battery at noon yesterday, 12 p.m., and it kept going down at a steady clip. Then I closed the lid for a while, then I reopened it and the decline started again. It's kind of hard to zoom in on this chart here, but let's say that was 2.45, probably a good five hours I got, and I got down to 24%. So according to my charts, with all the stuff that I have open, this thing lasts me quite a bit. It could last potentially all day with all that stuff open. This is five hours right here and I got down to 24%. So you can extrapolate. I'll have a few more hours, especially because the last percentage points actually take a little bit longer to uh, use up. Now, after my video reviewing the M1 Max and what I thought about it after a year of development on it, some of you have commented on my battery usage and 
the maximum capacity of 87%. One anonymous tipster emailed me uh, with a theory, and that has to do with the fact that most of the time I don't use MagSafe to charge my laptop, yet my laptop sits on my desk and I do some pretty heavy tasks once in a while, occasionally, <laughs> like rendering video is a big one, compiling code as well. And most of the time I have it plugged into my USB-C hub, which according to specs, puts out 60 watts of power. Now I didn't measure it and uh, the measurement came out to 80. So 80 is still quite a bit lower than the 140 watt adapter that Apple provides with the new large MacBooks. And if you're using the CPU and the GPU at the same time for heavy tasks, then your machine might be using more than 60 or 80 watts of power at that time than the USB-C hub can provide. The result is that the battery will start getting used at the exact same time that it's being charged. And the tipster's theory is that this will use up unnecessary charge cycles. And all this can be avoided just by using a higher power connection like the MagSafe. Now I did measure the power draw from the hub as well as the power draw just being plugged into the 140 watt adapter through USB-C and that was 100 watts. Unfortunately, I can't measure how much MagSafe is putting into the machine, but you can at least be sure that when MagSafe is plugged in, the other charging option is actually turned off. So the machine is actually preferring MagSafe whenever that's plugged in. And if it's preferring MagSafe, that may be a clue to us that perhaps Apple engineers uh, think that MagSafe is actually a better way to charge the MacBook. And perhaps we should listen to them. I don't know, they're smart people. They went to school, right? They got a job at Apple as engineers. Probably not an easy job to get. You need to be smart, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think from now on, with the new M2 Max, I will start charging it mostly through MagSafe. Only time will tell what my battery health will be after say eight months of use or a year of use. If you wanna know, subscribe to the channel <laughs> and check back in a year. Now there's also a link to this uh, Stack Exchange post that the tipster provided to me. A person is asking about the exact same thing I was worried about, wondering whether the Thunderbolt port should be used rather than MagSafe and whether the lower power is safe for the Mac. I'll post this down below if you're curious. The answers people provided are saying that it should be okay either way, but I've already tried it the one way, so now I'm gonna try it the other way. And if I'm seeing that uh, Apple is preferring MagSafe, then it's kind of giving me a clue that maybe that's the way to do it and maybe that's better. It's not to say that you shouldn't charge it through Thunderbolt at all or through USB-C at all, but maybe keep those times limited, especially if you're doing really heavy lifting with your machine, doing a lot of work with it. And also note that I'm using high power mode. I don't know if you're using auto or low power mode, this might not even apply and it might be perfectly fine using USB-C. I can only change one variable with one machine at a time and it takes time to figure these things out. So I'll report back here if I see any kind of strange behavior like I saw with my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Other than that, I wanna thank these fine people for providing support to the channel. These are members. If you wanna become a member and also provide some support, there's a button right there you can click. It's the join button. If you're not ready to become a member, don't worry about it. Just hit subscribe and that's completely free. Thanks for watching folks and I'll see you all later. Later.